Guess how many people quit their jobs today? How many? What do you think? A thousand, five thousand, maybe ten thousand? What if I told you a hundred thousand people quit their jobs today? And what if I told you three million Americans quit their jobs every single month? And if you're an employee running a company, what can you do about it? We're going to talk about it today. Okay, so before I give you 10 things you can do as an employer to retain employees, let's first talk about some stats having to do with retention. Here's what we got. First one I've already shared with you, 3 million employees quit every single month in America. Number two, cost of replacing a well-trained employee, meaning here's Bobby. He's been with me three years. I've trained him. He knows what he's doing. He makes $75,000 per year. If I want to replace Bobby, it's going to cost me exceeding 200% of his salary just to replace him. Meaning, I replace Bobby with Jackie, I have to spend $150,000 on top of Jackie's salary. That's how much a highly trained employee costs is if you replace him. Number three, employees who are engaged and thriving are 59% less likely to look for a job with a different organization in the next 12 months. Meaning what, if I'm engaged, hey, you got me going with a project, what are we working over here? And I'm thriving, I'm going to the next level, good things are happening. 59% less likely of going on jobs.com and looking for another job. And last but not least, very important because we're going to talk about it later on today. Bad boss performance makes employees four times more likely to quit. One more time. Bad boss performance makes employees four times more likely to quit. So what does bad boss performance mean? Maybe you got somebody that's working with your guys. He is not a good boss. She is not a good boss. And everybody on the team are quitting because it's bad boss. The bad boss is not leading their people properly. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. If you want any of these stats, we're going to put the links below. Second thing to talk about here is distractions of you, the boss, you, the employer, you, the CEO, distractions of retaining employees today. The first one is a great economy. Whenever economy is doing very good, it's hard to retain people. Why? Because everybody goes shopping with their resume. Hey, I make $72,000 a year here. Can you give me 80? Hey, hey, I make $68,000 a year. You give me 75, I'll come to you. Hey, I make 85. You give me six because I'm coming to you. So they're shopping because it's a great economy. Companies have cash. It's a great time to go shop your resume. So it becomes tough to retain people. Number two is not speaking the language of the new generation. So imagine as everybody's getting older, CEO's going from 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. As he's 50, he knows how to speak the 40-year-old language, 45, 50, 55, 60, but maybe he doesn't know how to speak the 22-year-old language or 28 or 33. So if you don't learn how to adjust with the language, retention goes down because you don't know how to speak that language. You got to learn the language they speak. And when I say language, I'm not talking about like Mandarin or Spanish. I'm talking about the language, the interest of that generation. Next, social media. Next, side gigs. If I'm working for you and I got a side gig making $6,000 a month or $3,000 a month or $5,000 a month, the threat of losing my job is no longer at the level of 99. Oh my gosh, I don't want to make my boss mad. What if I lose him because that person's got a side gig? You want to fire me? No problem. I'm making $5,000 a month part time. That's another enemy that people are facing today. Last but not least, it's competition. There's a lot of companies today that if you don't do your part as a company, you can lose employees to your competitor because they're doing a better job retaining people than you are. The whole proposition they have is better than you. So those are some of the things you're facing. Retention and some of the distractions in the marketplace. Now, 10 things you can do to retain employees. Number one, build stronger mid-level management. What am I talking about? So let's look at this. The CEO has the CFO, has the director, has the employees that report to the director, right? Many times, if you're the CEO, let's just say you're a good CEO, you hire a CFO, and the CFO comes from a place that's pretty organized, was with a former company for 15 years. Somehow, somewhere, you're able to persuade him to come and be your CFO. Then he brings middle management. The challenge with losing employees is the director or the VP, whoever is at this level, isn't properly trained on how to deal with employees and their team members, and they're losing people, but you don't know why you're losing people, because mid-level management needs some help. So you have to focus on mid-level management. Now, what do you do with this? We'll talk about that here in a minute. Number two is recruiting people that match your culture. I have many times found somebody who I looked at this guy. There was one guy recruiting. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy's a beast. He's absolutely incredible. I wish he would work with us, but he wouldn't. This was many, many years ago. 
he wouldn't because our culture doesn't fit his personality and his uh, uh, personality doesn't fit our culture. If I try to force him into our culture, it's just not going to work out. So I recommend him in another company. He went very happy, did good for himself. Here's what it was, our culture. Let's just see, you have a family environment. What's a family culture? Hey, we kind of run together as family. You know, it's a very uh, caring environment. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? How's family? How's everybody? Great. Number two is flexible. We're flexible. You want to come in at 8.30, it's cool. As long as you get the job done, you know, it's going to be fine. We have a very competitive, you're, you're, if you're on time, you're late, you know. If we say 8 o'clock, you got to be here by 7.55, maybe 7.30. You know, what are you doing leaving early? You got to stay a little later. That's a competitive environment, right? A lot of Silicon Valley, some of the financial industry, some of the sales businesses got to be very competitive to make it, right? Next one is hierarchy. Uh, any reason why you came into my office? Do you know who I am? Do you realize I run the department here? Have you spoken to your director yet? Please don't come to my office again unless if you speak to your director. His name is Bobby Jones. Go talk to Bobby Jones. Don't come to me again. Thank you. Thank you. Please get the door behind you. Thank you. Great job, by the way, on your project last month. That's hierarchy. Now, there are multi, multi-billion dollar companies out there that run on different kind of cultures. But we're talking about retaining people to your company, right? If you force somebody that doesn't fit into your culture, you're going to lose them. And not only are you going to lose them, you're going to frustrate them. More importantly, you're going to frustrate yourself. So you got to ask yourself, what is our culture? Ask the right question of the people you're recruiting that fit into your culture. Then say, this could possibly work. Don't force people into your culture. It's going to be disastrous. Number three, hire the best or have the best leadership development program. Let me explain to you. For instance, if I automatically can afford, I have money, you have resources, you got money saved. If you can't afford to go hire the best, go hire the best. If the difference is 140 gets you one of the best, but 220 gets you the best on top of the world, that additional $80,000 you're gonna make up in the return that person's gonna to bring to the company. Don't be cheap in that place. If you know this person is the best in every possible way, go hire the best. Now, you may not be able to afford it. If you can't afford to hire the best, you got to have a strong leadership development program to be able to take somebody from a $42,000 to $82,000 person to $113,000 to $173,000 because you're developing their identity based on the leadership program that you have. So now when, when we say this, here's what I do. Whether it's sales, okay, whether it's home office, whether it's support, whether it's directors, whether it's executive, whether it's carriers, partners, no matter who I'm working with, I always look around and I say, okay, who fits the culture the best? This guy does. He's bought in. He's a true believer. He's a worker. He gets it. He's a great student. He's coachable, strong character. I trust him. Integrity, competencies there. I like this person. I am locking onto this person to shape their mindset, and I'm putting 90% of my time to develop this person because if this person comes here, now I'm retaining employees. So what if I move him up and he becomes a leader? I don't have to not worry about it because he already knows the psychology behind how to work with people. And as the person moves up within the company, I'm not too worried because I developed them the right way. So again, if you can afford to hire the best, go overpay to get hired the best. But if you can't, create an incredible leadership development system where you know people who come through your model, your company, they move up. Next, number four, empower them to make decisions. What does this mean? It could be different levels of decisions you got to make. Well, you can get back on that person with an email. If somebody asks a question on this level, you can just get back to them. You don't need my approval. You know, if it comes down to money, you're a director, you can spend up to $10,000 with just needing a signature, but it's you. If it's a $100,000 CFO, you can do it yourself. If it's a half a million dollars, the CEO can make the decision himself, not needing the board. And anything above the half a million dollars, board makes the decision. It's a $5 million investment. We need the board's approval. If it's a $50 million investment, we need the board's approval. But find a way to empower them for decisions where employees are sitting there saying, I'm not just having somebody hover over me 24-7 where I feel like I can't do anything. Give them the flexibility and empower them to make some decisions. They will feel more ownership and the fact that you trust them, they move up, they do better. Number five, match qualities needed based on department. Meaning, I've hired people and I put them in a certain department where I watch them and I say, man, this is not gonna work out with the quality this person has. He's too aggressive, way too aggressive. The, the department you're a part of is customer service. Hi, thank you for calling, you know, such and such. How may I help you? Oh, I, that, that's no problem, Mr. Jones. I'm here to help you out. So can you share with me this information, please? I totally understand your frustration. I apologize about that. 
I, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Can you tell me a little bit more about this part? Are you on the website? Do you have the phone with you? Great. Look, jo Mr. Jones, I'm here to help you out. Right. Very accommodating. What a great personality, right? Now, imagine you put your type A personalities to do customer service. Yes, uh, what's up, Mr. Jones? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. Yeah, okay, I mean, what's the big deal? Everybody has problems nowadays with customer service. Well, why? Yeah, I, I mean, I get it, but, and then, boom. I said, oh, whoa, 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 buddy. It's a different strength. You may be competitive. You've got to work in a different department, but you've got to be behind the scenes. Many times I'll go to a restaurant, and I'll tell Mario, I say, that guy, hostess, not a hostess. That guy needs to be behind the scenes. You can't be in the front touching customers. He's a terrible hostess. You ever met hostess that are like this? Yes, what's your name? What time you did you have a reservation? Okay, hang on. Uh, 7 p.m.? Okay, hang on. We'll get to you in a minute. That, that's not a hostess. But that person can be better in a different place. That person cannot be the first person shaking hands, right? So you got to make sure you're positioning people with qualities that match the departments. And if it doesn't match, you got to let them go. But matching the department. Number six, ask who they want to be. Today, on a conference call I'm doing, one of my guys asked me a question saying, how do you get the most out of people? I said, what do you mean? Tell me more. So he starts telling me, well, I can't get a certain group of people in my uh, office to get excited. What do I do to get them excited? I said, let me ask you a question. He says, what's that? I said, where do you want to be by next September 2020 at our annual convention at MGM Grand Arena? We do this once here. The last one we did, we had President Bush and Kobe Bryant there, Jordan Peterson, all these guys. Next one's going to be MGM Grand Arena. Where do you want to be by then? And he says, well, I'd like to be at such and such place. His wife is also on the phone. I said, okay. Uh, what, what level would you like to be? What, what, what would you like to be recognized for? What are some things you'd like to experience for yourself? And then he starts asking, saying all this stuff. I said, what, what things will you reward your, yourself with if you reach those milestones? What selfish ways are you going to reward yourself? And he started talking. He got excited. And then at the end, five minutes of me going through these questions with him, I said, do you remember what question you asked me? He says, no. What was the question? I said, you asked me a question. How to get your people to move and how you can motivate them. I said, do you realize what I just did to you is what you got to do to your people? He says, I never thought about it that way. I said, how do you feel right now? You feel excited? He said, man, I'm so excited. I said, you got to go out and do the same thing with the folks you're working with, which means what? A very basic question. Hey, Bobby, look, who do you want to be here? What do you want to do? Tell me. You want to be here? You want to be here? You want to be here? I can see you being here, but if you want to be here, you got to do X, Y, Z. You know what, Pat? I really want to be here. Well, great. If you do, these are some of the areas you got to work on. You're good in this, but you got some work you got to do here. And you're not as consistent in these four areas. But if you want to go, you got to show me these things, okay? And if you do the following things, we can consider moving into this place. Great. But I asked the question based on what? Who do they want to be? You want to move your people and retain? Ask your people regularly. Who do they want to be? I will tell you so many bosses don't ask their people who they want to be. They keep losing people because people are just trying to do what pleases them. At the end of it, you got to ask them, who do you want to be? Next, clear set of qualities, values, and principles that the company values, meaning here's what we value as a company. And we talk about it in the hiring interview. These are the things we stand for. Do you like it? I do. Great. Do you like it? No. No problem. All the best to you. But rather than forcing, we now attract people who value our values and principles. And the way we get the people that value our values and principles is by talking about it. And when you talk about it, you'll know in an interview, somebody says, oh my gosh, that's very important to me. And, or you'll see somebody that goes like this. Yeah, no, this is not going to work. Maybe needing to go to a different place, right? And that's totally fine. But I can't force you into our culture. Next, number eight, strong training program. Remember earlier when I said building a strong mid-level management? And at the bottom here, we talked about the fact that hire the best, if not have a strong leadership program. So these two go with the strong training program. So for me... One of our guys right now, uh, she's the chief reputation officer. I sent her to Harvard. She's in Harvard while I'm making this video. She's in Harvard. We spend $15,000 to send her to Harvard, but no problem. She's going to Harvard. We just gave her a promotion. We're excited about her going over there. Why? Because I'm trying to get her to see a complete different scope of things by having all these different case studies she goes through, and she comes back constantly being developed. We send a few of our guys to Wharton Business School. We send our guys to Adobe 
that has its one week or four day course. We'll spend a few thousand dollars and send our guys there because we're in the game of constant development. We spent a few thousand dollars the other day, had all of our directors go through a two day program that's about becoming better on how to deal, work with people. And it showed how to communicate with talkers, doers, all these different personalities, approaches, how to hold them accountable, how to excite them, how to get the most out of them. We invest in these things regularly and then people come back and come out of it, right? And then there's monthly accountability on how to develop these leaders. This is all more on investing into your training program. This is an area sometimes people wing it, companies wing it, and then they wonder, why do I keep losing people? Why do I have some, such a weak mid-management, middle management? Because you don't invest into a lot of your training. This, this you have to be very detailed and, and strategic about it. You can't just wing it. Go read this book. Go read that book. You can't just wing it. You got to be specific about it. Next, constantly emphasize re. See, sometimes when I work with leaders, we have life going on. I got three kids. I'm married. I got family. Issues happens, right? We had a tornado that hit just yesterday, right? Weather's not good. Craziness. Building comes down. You know, we have a, a, a lose a couple agents. Somebody passes away over here. We have issues with a certain vendor, a partner, a carrier, all of these things. And if you're not too careful, you will be beat up so much where you're kind of like, oh my gosh, oh, it's another day to come to work. Oh my God, I'm just beat. Oh, what else do I have to do? In those moments, you got to figure out a way to re, re, this entire game is re, to retain, re-energize, retain, restate the vision, recast where we're going, re Kindle the relationship that had a fallen out. It's re, everything is re remind, re remind, re remind over and over and over and over again. And then eventually, guess who else is doing that? Your CFO, your directors. They're in the game of re as well, right? Great parents reinforce, great leaders reinforce. Hey guys, come here. Like yesterday, Patriots, I'm looking at the ESPN early this morning, the fact that their team is already shutting down. Uh, New York Jets, and Bill Belichick is sitting there talking to the defense. Game is over with. What are you doing? But he's reinforcing because he knows they're 7-0. and They're going to go into the playoffs. He's trying to get because they have the best defense so far for the year. He's reinforcing the defense. What are you doing? That's why he's who he is, Bill Belichick. Hey, guys, here's what we got. Everybody's watching and what he's doing. That's why people follow a guy like that, and that's why he's got so many Super Bowls because he's in the re-game. Leadership is all about re, constantly, without getting tired, burned out, oh my God, stamina, I'm not in the mood today. You don't have the responsibility of being in the mood or not, because you chose to be a leader. The moment you choose to be a leader, you lose that privilege of, hey, you know, I'm also gonna go out there and be upset about everything that's going on with the company. Recipe for losing a lot of people. You gotta stay level-headed. If you gotta find a way to go out there and release and do your own release, whatever that may be, do it. But make sure you don't do it around your people where you have a blow up and you lose a couple employees. And last but not least, transparency of challenges. Every Monday morning, we'll have a huddle here and we'll get up. Here's where we were at last week. Wasn't a good week, you know. Here's where we're at so far for the month. Last month, we did better than this month. We got to kind of get some things together. Hey, guess what? This, month, this week, we had a record-breaking week. Great job to this department, phenomenal to that department. That department, we got some work to do over here. And then that department will turn around and say, but we're coming, we got some stuff coming up. Great, but it's open. Hey, here's the thing that we're looking for. That department needs help. If anybody's trying to go to a different department and unilateral move, we're looking, we need some help in this department. But it's transparent where people are like, wow, I trust this environment. There's not a lot of games where everything is good. Everything is perfect because that's fake. You know, it, it can't be perfect. There's always issues. Believe it or not, a certain level of, I'm not telling you to go put up the checkbooks and say, hey guys, we only have $13,000 in the checking account, but stick around, we may make it. When I went to $13,000 in the checking account with the company I was running, and we almost lost everything nine years ago, I wasn't going around telling everybody, I may not be able to pay your payroll next week. You know, I just wanna let you guys know that. You know, but we're gonna figure this out. I tell you this, man, we're gonna figure this out. No. But certain challenges we were facing, we talked about it because you share pressure and believe it or not, when the people see that there's certain challenges taking place, people want to come say, hey, I'll come and help out. Hey, we're not beating these guys. They're ahead of us by this much. I want to rise up. What do we need to do? Hey, we're number seven. We'd like to get a number six, but we got some work to do, guys. We got to really pick it up. Hey, let's go. So it gives opportunities for people to rise up and more people that could potentially move up within your company. Again, you had some stats. You have some enemies, you have 10 things to do to retain people in your company. I got two videos I want you to watch that have to do with this topic. Number one, how to pay your employees. There's four ways you pay your employees. 
and it's specific ways of doing it to make sure you retain your best employees. And the second thing I want you to watch, it's a video I did a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, titled 24 Ways to Improve Your Company Culture, okay? If you want to figure out a way how to pay your employees, watch this. If you want to figure out a way how to improve your company culture, watch this here. But either way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you got any thoughts, comment below or tweet me directly at Patrick Bay David. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.